Today's video is sponsored by Uppercase Designs. What's up YouTube and welcome to another draw along with me where today we're going to go ahead and show you how you can turn any sort of character in any sort of series into a neon sort of design where we pick out one particular element and make it glow. Now I've created neon tutorials in the past but everybody kept asking me how do we go about doing this for this character or this character. So in today's tutorial I'll guide you through the steps on how you can set up a canvas ready to go and then go ahead and apply this to any sort of other character that you like from any other series. So have fun with it and if you want even more tutorials from me including this neon one that you can see on screen now you can come and join me over on Patreon where I've been posting exclusive tutorials to my Patreon supporters and the catalogue sits over a hundred exclusive Patreon exclusive tutorials. That's a lot of exclusives. So come and join me over on Patreon. There's a link in the description down below. Enjoy today's tutorial and let's get started. But before we do, I wanna introduce you to the Nimble Grip 2. Not only does this grip provide two varying swooped edges for comfort when writing or drawing, but this new version has also been engineered around the Apple Pencil's native features. It now boasts a new design that includes a flat edge, which allows you to use the Apple Pencil's native features, such as the double tap feature where you can double tap to switch between an app's tools, for example. And my favorite part, you can now charge the Apple Pencil without having to take off the grip. How awesome is that? Now, if you wanna check out the Nimble Grip 2 for yourself, I'll leave a link to it in the description down below where you can find all the different colors that it comes in. And with that said, let's get back to the video. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to try and do is think of a background surface to apply this on. Now, of course, I've provided links in the description down below. So if we go ahead and grab Chrome, for example, and put it over here on the left-hand side, I can then go ahead and see the image that I've provided that is available over on Pexels. You can free download it and download it to your files and then import it, or you can hold down on the image and then you can go ahead and then drag it over and into Procreate. And then you can just swipe Chrome out of the way for a minute at the top using the three dots, and we're gonna go ahead and create our background. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna stretch out the background. Now, if I tap on these nodes in the top right, I'm gonna go ahead and set this to 3599, and then that should then scale it up accordingly. And then that way I can sort of drag this around until I get a little bit of that kind of grungy effect towards the bottom. So something around about sort of this sort of position is pretty good. And then I'm gonna tap on the three, uh, my cursor when I'm done. I'm then going to go ahead and I'm just going to make some adjustments to the actual image itself. So if we go ahead and go up to our adjustments, we go to our curves. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to keep the blacks where they are in the bottom left and making sure you're on the gamma tab. I'm going to bring that down to around about sort of two thirds down of that second row there just to darken up the image a tiny bit and then tap on my adjustments when I'm done. You don't need to do that for your backgrounds if you use a different image. If you use a different image, all you need to try and do is sort of somewhat think about darkening it up a little bit so that your neon has something to stand off of a little bit more. Now I'm also going to go ahead and go to my layers. I'm going to swipe mine to the left and duplicate it. I'm going to change the top one from normal to the option of overlay and then I'm going to go ahead and grab my cursor and I'm going to flip it vertically so that way I get this kind of grunge top and bottom look to it and I could flip that horizontal just so it's kind of diagonal to one another and tap on my cursor when I'm done and then if I go to my layers I'll pinch them together. So we want to end up with a nice dark background. Step two is then introducing your subject into it and making some adjustments to it. Now we're going to go ahead and we'll just go to our Chrome again. So we're going to bring out Chrome on the left hand side. I've got another tab down here and we're going to open up this photo here of Goku. Now you can pick any subject image you want. I've used Goku because he has the blonde hair and it's a great element for us to pick out and make neon. You kind of want to just take a look at the image or the character that you want to select and see if there's a particular element that you want to make stand out with the neon effect. And with Goku, again, his hair is great. But as I've shown in the intro, you can do this with a variety of different subjects. So I'm just going to hold down on Goku again and then drag him onto my canvas. And then I can actually swipe up Chrome and get rid of that. Now, at this point, you want to go ahead and scale up your image to a size that you're happy with. And we're going to scale him up a little bit just a bit more than that. And we're gonna make sure he's positioned in the center and his hair is as close to the middle as we can without sort of cutting off his body too much. So I'm gonna sort of position him here and tap on my cursor when I'm done. Now at this point, while it's still in color, it's really important then that you grab the color that you wanna go ahead and make neon. So for example, with this hair, you could hold down with your finger and grab a color that is part of the element that you wanna make neon. Now I've already pre-selected a color 
which if I go up to the My Colors, I can go to the Value tab. I've already made this sort of slightly more yellow tone. You do wanna make sure it's nice and saturated, so you don't have to necessarily go for a color from the image, as long as it's close and it resembles what it is you're trying to actually make into that neon element. So mine there is FDB E32, and I've put it in the palette there if I need it for later on. Now, we've selected the color that we need, and we've stored it in our palette ready to go. What we now wanna go ahead and do is make this like a stencil painting, a bit like a Banksy-esque design onto the concrete wall in the back. So what we'll do is we'll go up to our adjustments. We'll go to our hue, saturation and brightness to start with. We'll bring our saturation down to none. So it's completely black and white now. If we then tap on our adjustments, we tap on it again and go to our curves. We now wanna get rid of all the mid-tones or the grays, everything in between. We just want it black and white. So to do that, this bottom left node is your blacks black all the way through to white. We wanna bring the black across slightly up as well to around about sort of this point here. And then we wanna bring in our whites across the top. So everything that you sort of draw in, this gap here between the two is at all the spectrum of everything else that can be in color. By dragging the black and white slightly on top of each other, you reduce the possibility of anything being a mid-tone, like a gray tone. Now it's just simply black and white. Now, it's really important to also bear in mind if you decide to use a different image, your tones here may need to go to different points, but they just need to be on top of each other like this. The white will be slightly to the right hand side of the black node here at the bottom. But again, that's totally dependent on if you decide to use a different image. Now, why have we set it to black and white? If we tap on our adjustments, if we go then to the layer and we tap on its blend mode here, it's set to normal. But if we scroll up to linear burn, look at how now all the white areas have now been made transparent and you get that Banksy-esque style sort of painting where you've got the stencil effect on the concrete surface. Now you can go ahead and tap on it and possibly bring that down a little bit. If you wanna bring through some of the texture, you could bring it down to say 70% there on the linear burn. And then in there, you should get a little bit of noise in here, which just makes it look like it sits on the surface maybe a tiny bit more. So you've got your stencil in play on your concrete wall. It's now time to add in the neon effect. So we'll go ahead and we'll create a new layer. We'll go to our brush. It's always best to use the trusty calligraphy option of the monoline brush. And I've also gone ahead and tapped on it and gone to stabilization. And I always have mine set to a very high sort of streamline and stabilization, just over 50%. That way you get some nice smooth lines. So if we hit done, we're gonna go ahead and set our brush size to 20%. Our color of choice, of course, is this color here in the palette, which is gonna be his hair. So we wanna go ahead and outline a few of these strands of hair at the front to start with and use them because it layers itself backwards. You wanna just start to sort of apply that at the very beginning. So if we go ahead and then apply some of these areas here, take a look at the image of the character that you've got and just see how it all layers on top of one another and what you can then start to draw in. So this process here will just be obviously dependent on what it is you decide to do your neon effect on. You'll see a few sort of factors that I'm trying to accommodate for. I'm leaving gaps between the lines. I'm not joining them up. They can be nice and separated. I'm gonna just continue on drawing in all the hair. A few elements there you might have to make a little bit chunkier than they actually are, but just simply because we don't want our lines to somewhat touch. And so you might have to make a few elements a little bit bigger than the actual illustration that you have potentially brought into Procreate from the original artist. Now we're gonna go ahead and go up here, get a few of the far strands in, and his hair is lovely and layered. So we've got lots to play with here. And then there's a final little one there. You can make it a little bit more simple if you want. You don't have to do all the extra additional ones at the end. So you've done his hair. You've added in all of the different layers. It's now time to make it glow. Now, bear in mind, of course, depending on how dense your area is here in your illustration, depending on what character you may have done, some of these levels, sort of percentages, etc., you may have to adjust for your own design. So let's go ahead and just add in a quick shadow element to it before we make it glow. So we're gonna to go to our layers. We're gonna go up to our line work, of course, swipe it to the left and duplicate it the bottom one out of the two, you're gonna go ahead and tap on it and alpha lock it. So now you can't paint outside of it. What we can quickly do is if we go up to our colors and we go to our disc, we can double tap at the bottom of the disc to select black. 
we can go back to the layer, we can tap on it and fill it. And because it's alpha locked, you can't let the paint sort of fall out of the lines that you've already drawn. You can see from the thumbnail, it's turned black. If I tap on it and turn off the alpha lock, if we then go ahead and grab our cursor, we make sure we've got uniform selected. We can drag the top right node in and bring that in a slight bit. So I'm going to go ahead and create like a downward kind of middle facing shadow. So I can bring that in a little bit. And that's just like a bit of a shadow on the back end where the bars are not touching the surface. It's kind of just where the light's not going to land on the surface of the concrete wall and position it in the center of our lines. If I then tap on my cursor when I'm done, if we go ahead and go up to our adjustments and we go to the option of Gaussian Blur, if we swipe from left to right, we can go ahead and blur this out. Now make sure that you obviously previously turned off the alpha lock. If you didn't turn off the alpha lock, your lines will stay solid so now when you blur this you'll be able to get a nice shadow there sitting on the surface so i'm only going to go up to around about three or four percent here just a very sort of subtle blurring there and then tap on your adjustments when you're done now we're going to go back up to our layer we're going to swipe it to the left and duplicate it just to boost those shadows a little bit more that sit underneath so we'll leave it at two for the moment let's then go ahead and add in some blur here so we're going to go ahead and go to our lines here we're going to swipe them to the left and duplicate them we tap on the bottom one out of the two. We'll go to our adjustments. We'll go to the option of Gaussian Blur and we'll swipe from left to right, adding in a nice spread of color up to around about 20% there and tap on your adjustments when you're done. That gives you a big glow. That's starting to spread the lighting out a little bit more. We're then gonna go ahead and go to our lines again, swipe them to the left and duplicate them. Now at this point, you can go ahead and tap on the top one, alpha lock it, go to your colors, Double tap in the top left to select white and then go back to the layer, tap on it and fill it. So now the lines will all turn white. We can then go ahead and go to the yellow layer of all the line work underneath. We can go ahead and we can tap on our adjustments, go to Gaussian Blur and we can add in a little bit of a glow around them. And I think something fairly tight to the lines, roughly around about sort of five to 10% will give you a nice solid glow around them. Now we are going to sort of set that to around about 8% and then go ahead and go back to our layer, tap on it and change the blend mode to the option of add, which will now really start to punch out those lines. And if we tap away, you can see how your lines are starting to really come about with a glow. Now for me, this is where the lighting starts to really take a turn for the better, because what we're going to do is we're going to go up to our layers. We're going to go above our white lines for a minute. We're going to create a new layer. We're going to change the blend mode from normal to the option of pin light. We're going to make sure our color is set to the same color that we were using for the gold of the hair. We're going to go to our colors and we're going to go to airbrushing and the soft brush. And we're going to set that brush size to something nice and large, probably around about sort of, uh, let's go a bit smaller than that, around about 15%. And you're going to want to go ahead and sort of add in a good amount of glow on here. So sort of spread that out as well, sort of take it beyond the boundary of your design a little bit more. So I've gone a little bit larger here so I can spread the lighting out a little bit more adding in this wicked sort of burnt glowy effect to the lighting. Now that may look slightly different depending on what color you use for different sort of characters. So just bear that in mind. And then at this point, you can also go ahead and go to your layers and this very bottom glow that we created for the hair, you may want to swipe it to the left and duplicate it and just see what type of effect you get. In my initial sort of practice for this, I ended up going up to three in total, but that is totally optional depending on how much glow you've maybe added on the different layers. Obviously we want it nice and glowy and nice and neon. So it's totally up to you what sort of level you go to. So I think on this occasion, I think I could go to the option of two of the big blurs in the background. So we've got two big blurs, which we've only introduced an extra one to at the very end based on the lighting that we added above. We've then got a very tight line of blur here to our bars. We've then got the actual bars themselves. And then we've got the pin light layer at the top and the pin light just makes all the difference. Now, another element that you can add to this is an electrical cable as if this is being powered, of course. So we can go up to our layers. We do want to put it underneath our pin light layer. So what we'll do is we'll just simply go all the way to the back where our design is of our character, create a new layer, go to your colors and double tap at the bottom of the disk to select black. If you go to your brush and go back to calligraphy and the monoline brush and set your brush size to 5%, you can create a small cable. You can zoom in any side you like. I'm going to do it on the right side over here. I'm just going to draw in a cable down here, not perfectly straight, little bit of sort of wobble in it. That's perfectly fine. And then if we go ahead and we create a new layer in front of it, tap on it and clip it to it. 
Then grab the same color that you've used for the glow, so the yellow in this occasion. Go to your brush, go to airbrushing and the soft brush again and set the size to something really small around about 2%. Wherever your lighting is coming from primarily, you can just sort of brighten up on your cable and create a bit of a glow and then let that lighting just sort of fade out towards the bottom. So you can really brighten it up on the top surface there and just show that sort of electrical cable, which just gives you a fun little additional element. Let's also give it a drop shadow. So if we go to our layer, we can grab the cable, swipe it to the left and duplicate it. The bottom one out the two, grab your cursor, drag it out a little bit, creating a bit of a gap between your line and your cable. I'll tap a few times just to move it a pixel or two. Tap on your cursor when you're done. Then go to your adjustments, Gaussian blur, swipe from left to right, adding in a 4% Gaussian blur to kind of match up to the rest. Then tap away on your adjustments when you're done. You should end up with a lovely little drop shadow just in behind your cable, giving it a bit more depth. If you then pinch with two fingers, you go full screen with four, you end up with today's finished design. So I hope you enjoy creating another neon design and hopefully you can apply this to any other character from any other series that you like. It could even be a real world photo of any sort of element that you can think of. The sort of possibilities with this is pretty endless, but I've given you a great foundation with the photos that we've used today in today's design. So make sure to tag me in any of your neon creations that you create over on Instagram or Facebook, wherever you want to tag me, I'm pretty much everywhere. As always, make sure to come and join me over on Discord. It's completely free to join. And if you want even more tutorials from me, just like this neon one that you'll be able to see on screen now, you can come and join me over on Patreon, where I've been posting exclusive tutorials to my Patreon supporters, and the catalogue sits at over 100 at the time of recording. So make sure to check that out using the link in the description down below. Thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful day, and I'll see you in the next one.